Now, let's, you see where it says responsive reading, everybody sees that? Yeah. Let's uh, read the part where it says leader after it says for the director of music. Let's read right from there. Let's read together. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. Their deeds are violent. There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if they have any one stand, any who seek God. I drop down at the bottom where it says text, 1 Corinthians 4, 10, 8. 4, 10, 8 reads as far as I read it. It says, we are fools for Christ. Everybody repeat that. We are fools, we are fools, for, Christ. fools for Christ. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Follow your head with me in this word. Father God, fill us with the Holy Ghost and power. Take charge right now. Preach, publish, proclaim your word. Let everyone lead differently than when they came in. We'll give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In the name, above every name, the mighty man says name of the Lord Jesus, we pray God's people say. Amen. 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 Thank God you're here. Amen. 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 Church, the, you come to church. the better you look. The better you look. So you better keep coming. Better keep coming. Otherwise, ugliness might creep up on us. <laughs> Tell them, neighbor, neighbor, there is a word from the Lord. There is a word from the Lord. The word of the Lord this afternoon. The word of the Lord this afternoon. It's April Fool. It's April Fool. Shake their head like they're going to give you some money. In the year 2011, Thomas D. Carlo Calloway, also known as CeeLo Green, made a song called I'm a Fool for You. I heard it immediately. I recognized he was great. He had a beautiful, one of those rough, scratchy, but mellow voices. And he sang with a woman named Melody Fiona, I think her name was. And it was just a fantastic song. So uh, he got my attention. I, I, uh, it was something about him that reminded me of church. And it should have because both his parents were preachers. They both uh, died early and uh, he grew up. And uh, uh, he came to my attention in 2011. By 2012, he was on top of the world. He first got famous collaborating with the group uh, Outcast, the rap group from Atlanta, uh, Outcast. Uh, but also, he went on a solo career. He had a couple of rap groups. He went on a solo career in 2008. And uh, when they made the animated cartoon movie, Kung Fu Panda, he sang uh, a revision of an old song, Kung Fu Fighting. It was an old song, I guess, in the 60s or 70s. It must have been 70s, 80s, Kung Fu Fighting. He sang an updated version. He really sang it well. 2010, he made a record called Forget You. That's the clean version of the record. It's a dirty version that I can't tell you the name in the holy place. In 2011, he became a mentor on the TV show, The Voice. In 2012, he was so successful and so big, he got his own TV show called The Good Life with Sino Green. But also, later on in 2012, he was uh, charged with sexual battery. Woman charged him with putting something in her drink. She said, One moment she was sitting in the bar, and the next moment she woke up with him in the bed. She couldn't remember anything in between. Mm -hmm. And he pleaded no contest, which is a weird kind of way of admitting something happened without fully admitting guilt. And uh, uh, they, they did not give him any jail time. They uh, charged him, uh, they charged him with a fine, they gave him probation. And he had to do so many hours of community service. And uh, that would have been the end of it. But he got on Twitter. It's something about Twitter and Facebook and Instagram that make people go crazy. <laughs> From common people to the White House. And so he, he tweeted a statement 
that, that seem to say that you can't rape a woman if she's unconscious. Yes, it was very shocking. Uh, he said that just a woman being with you gives a man consent to do anything to her. Now, this accusation of sexual battery was bad enough, but because of the statement in the tweet, he lost everything. He lost his TV show, he lost his uh, position on The Voice, uh, his, his career took a nosedive for a number of years, he did not record, and he's just now trying to, clean, to climb back. Maybe it was the case that his song was a prophecy. He had sang, I'm a fool, and his behavior seemed to bear that out. <laughs> Fools are dangerous. Did you all hear what I said? Yeah. Fools are dangerous. The novelist Trevor Nyan said this. It's very important, particularly for our young people. A foolish associate is more dangerous than a clever opponent. Did y'all get that? Yeah. A foolish associate is more dangerous than a clever opponent. Many of us know that. Uh, if you can be with a fool, and a fool will get you in a fight when you didn't have to fight. A fool will put your life in danger. And many people have been with somebody. I've read about many car accidents where the driver was speeding and he had a passenger. Maybe the passenger said, slow down. Maybe the passenger said, don't do it. But the driver didn't, and they both paid with their life. How many of y'all have done something foolish in your life? Oh, yeah. Come on, tell the truth. Oh, yeah. Many of us have risked our lives oh, yeah. acting a fool. Can, can I talk? Many of us have done things where if we had thought about it or after it happened, we said, how in the world did I do something like that? <laughs> I told a story this morning, a fellow came to the campus when I was in college, and he said, listen, brother, I know you're a militant brother, and he said, uh, uh, my landlord has been messing with me, and uh, he's a brother of another persuasion, we want you to come, I want you to come, and we're going to straighten him out. And I said, yes, brother, come on. I had my black tan on, I was a black panther in college, I'm not going to tell you. And, and then I found out he went to every group, he went to the football play, he went to the basketball play, he went to the Greeks. We went to almost everybody. So when we got there, there was about 20 guys there. We were all like, yeah, something's going to happen. We're going to straighten this out. And so we were standing. You got to imagine this now. We were standing at the top of a ledge. And so we went in the door. And when you, when you went in the door and looked up the stairs, that's where the, our friend had his apartment. So we were in the apartment, and I was standing next to a big old football player. And he said, yeah, man, this dude don't know what he messed with. Look at all of us. He always said, that's right, brother. We're going to straighten this thing out. And so the fellow came in the door, and he had a gun. And when he saw all of us, he pulled the gun out and pointed. Now, you want to see 20 guys run real fast. I wound up in the closet with one of the biggest football players. He was saying, man, if we're going to die, if we're going to die, I said, if you don't shut up, we might die. Well, we got away. But I thought about it afterwards. See, I was. At the top of the stairs, I was right in the middle. Everybody knew I, you know, I was protesting and all that, so they put me in the middle. Sometimes, people put you up front, right? They go way in the middle. No, that's all right. I'm talking about being a fool.
Supposedly, he had driven the getaway car in a robbery. So I said to him, what's wrong with you? You know better. You've been raised better. He said, Reverend Taylor, I'm going to tell you the truth. My friends picked me up and asked me to take them to the bank. And he said, while we, I took them to the bank while we were sitting outside. I heard a lot of noise. And they came out running. They had guns in their hands. And they jumped in. And they said, try it, man, try it. And he said, so I drove away. And I looked him dead in the eye. I said, I said, boy, I said, that don't even sound right. He said, Reverend Taylor, now this way right. He said, I swear for God, that's the way it happened. And then I said, so you was the unknown getaway driver. He said, Reverend Taylor, I said, oh, my heart. But then he started laughing. And then I said, I don't believe you because you laughed. I said, tell me what I laughed. He said, you laughed. I said, I'm laughing because I think you're lying. <laughs> you see, but there's, there's a possibility that he was telling the truth. Maybe he did just take them to the bank and they robbed the bank and ran out with the money and got in the car. If so, you know what he was? He was a fool. Did you know how to talk? Fools are dangerous. Foolish people do foolish things. Let me tell you three things people do that only foolish people do. Let me tell you these things, because one of the things you got to do, you got to check out yourself to make sure you're not a fool. Matter of fact, lean over and ask your neighbor, are you a fool? Don't get mad. You think they're just doing it because I said, lean over and ask the person on the other side and say, what about you? Are you a fool? What about you? The way that you know you're a fool, nobody thinks they're a fool. The way you know you're a fool if you do foolish things. That's right. Let me tell you three foolish things people do is help you know what you really are. Number one, everybody repeat after me. Fools. Fools. Trust people. Trust people. They really don't know. They really don't know. Uh -huh. My grandfather was a visionary. He started several businesses. But he had one problem. He always, he always had the vision. He always had the working capacity. He's the one that had the plan. But he always let somebody else hold the money. And business after business after business, his business partners knew that they could take him. And about five or six businesses he made, he started and he made, they stole all the money. Some of them left town. And so he never was able to put to see any of his visions realized because he was associated with thieves. Mm. Foolish people do foolish things. Everybody repeat after me. Foolish people, Foolish people take risks, take risks that, don't make sense. that don't make sense. You see these people, they get there to have a camera and they'll be on the edge of a cliff. Mm -hmm. They want to take a picture of themselves on that edge of a cliff. Some of them have slipped. There was a man in India. He was in a wild, uh, wild preserve with wild animals. It was in a truck that had big uh, rails on it on the side to protect them because the sign said stay in the truck because there are tigers and lions in this park. So they drive him through the park and a man sees a sleeping lion and he tells them stop, stop, stop. And he doesn't, they don't stop because they, they, they know, the driver knows he doesn't stop. The man climbs up and jumps out and runs over to the lion to take a selfie. <laughs> the lion is mad because some fool disturbed his sleep. And he wakes up and begins to bite the man and scratch the man. And the people get out, they try to scare the lion away, they look around, wondering if more lions are coming, and they tore his body up. I don't know if he lived or died, but I do know he was a fool. <laughs> foolish people do foolish things. Here's another thing foolish people do. Everybody get out to me. Foolish people. Make no preparation for the future that they know is coming. The Bible tells a story about five, uh, ten virgins, five wise and five foolish, and they were getting ready for the bridegroom to come and go to a celebration. Five of them didn't have enough oil. They did not prepare. They knew they were coming to the celebration. They should have went and got the oil. Five of them was ready. And so when they heard that he was on his way, the, the five uh, uh, foolish ones said to the five wise ones, look, give us some of your oil. And the five wise ones said, uh-huh, girl, we ain't got enough for all that. You should have went and got your oil like we did. We all knew we was coming here today. We all knew we had to wait on the bridegroom. Uh-uh, because if we give you 
solution or we're not going to have enough for ourselves. Honey, you on your own. You better go down to Walmart and get you some oil for yourself. So the women went to whatever Walmart it was back in the biblical day. And they got over. When they got back, the bridegroom had come and the door was shut. And it could not be opened. They were foolish because they knew what was coming and they did not get ready. Some of us, we know what's coming. We know we have to take care of parents who are older, but we're not prepared. Some of us, we know what's coming. We know one day we're going to have to retire from our jobs, but we're not prepared. Some of us, we know what's coming. One day this body's going to break down and we have to, listen, you should pay for your own funeral. It's called insurance. Passing the hat and go fund me is an irresponsible thing for you to rely on. Oh, y'all, y'all don't want Don't you know it costs money in America to be born and it costs money to die? Amen. That's why you need to have life insurance. Because if you don't, you're leaving someone else to do something that's not their responsibility. And that is foolish. Can I go ahead and talk? Well, that's just some, some, some things that I want you to remember. I want our young people to remember that. Because many of our young people have been standing somewhere and evil came. Yeah. Listen, the Bible said a wise person can see evil afar off, but a simpleton waits until the evil comes on them. You've got to learn to recognize evil before it gets to you and get out of the way. Can I go ahead and talk about that? Well, today, in my remaining time, I want to talk about two kinds of fools. How many did I say? <laughs> two kinds of fools. The first fool is the one who says in their heart, there is no God. This is a very common way of thinking in our time, that there is no God. Now, a lot of people won't say it. If you ask them, they will say there's a God, but they live as if there are no consequences of their actions. They live as if there's no one they have to answer to. They live as if there's no God looking overhead who sees the wicked and the just. But the Bible says that the fool has said in their heart, a lot of wickedness and evil with people is in their heart. And the fool has declared in their heart, there is no God. That's why our community sometimes uh, is so evil and so wicked in some places. There are some people in our community that don't believe in God at all. They believe they can do whatever they want to do. And they, they just do all kinds of evil. They'll, they'll kill at the drop of a hat. They'll be violent at the drop of a hat. Some of you seen that recently. Did you see that man hit that woman, that 78-year-old woman on the subway? Hit her in the face like he'd never been taught to respect his mother, like he'd never been taught to respect a woman. There are people who have no respect of God. And when people have no respect of God, they ultimately will have no respect for you either. Cain killed Abel in the book of Genesis. It was a moment where Cain forgot God. In his jealousy, in his anger, in his bitterness, he forgot there was a God he had to answer to. Now, when God talked to him, he wanted mercy. He wanted mercy. But in the moment of his rage and in the moment of his anger, when he, before he killed his brother, God was nowhere in his mind. God was nowhere in his heart. In his heart, in that moment, mind in that moment, there was no God. Bible says that is a fool. The book of Luke in the 12th chapter and the 20th verse calls the person who was all about money while neglecting God, God calls the person a fool. That's not me, that's God. Because if you don't make yourself rich in God, the Bible says you are a fool. Now, all of us in here, many of us in here are not going to be rich materially. We ought to do well. We ought to have nice things. We ought to prepare. I just got through saying that. But I want us to understand that we have riches available to us in God. And if we spend all our time chasing money and not thinking about the great things God has done for us, it is God who says you are a fool. Think for a minute about all that God has done for us. Think about all God has given us. He's given us a Bible to direct our lives. He's given us the church to come and praise his name. He's given us a preacher to declare the word of God. Did you hear that choir sing that if they didn't lift your spirit, you must be dead already? He gave us that choir. He gave us 
us salvation. He gave us the Holy Spirit. God gave us gifts. The angels of the Lord camp around them that fear him. God gave you angelic protection. You're not alive because you're tough. You're alive because God has mercy on your soul and have angels watching over you. God has given you the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the promise of heaven. God has given you eternal life. If you reject all
to church and you said, we had a great time. Yes. And, and they look at you and they say, well, what happened different today? You uh -huh. just tell them what happened. They don't understand why you love church so much. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can I go ahead and talk? Yes. Don't yes. expect people to understand. When God gives you a revelation, don't tell somebody that's wicked. Yes. They don't know what you're talking about. Go find you a Christian person. When you need to pray, don't go to the worst person in the office. Don't go to the family member that's smoking crack. They need you to pray for them. Why you going to pray for me and not pray for you? No. Oh, y'all are both Hallelujah. 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 It takes a spiritual person to understand spiritual things. Are y'all listening to me? And so the Bible says that in chapter 2 and chapter 3, it says the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. Every now and then they come out with something. Come out with a, a, a pack, secret, this, that. And you know how they come out with it. They, they get over. Everything they want to do, they get over. She put it up. <laughs> Oprah got her own religion. Oprah is who looks on a magazine and they own the cover every time? Oh. And so when I see all of these things and people come, people get new fast, people, I, I don't want to bother because all of that is foolishness to God. In order to have the wisdom of God, you have to reject the wisdom of this world. And it's hard for us. But the Bible says two different wisdom. The Bible says God rejects the wisdom of this world and that the wisdom of God looks foolish to this world. And so that's why people think you're foolish when you pray. Yes. That's why you talk about people can cuss in public and then everybody says, oh, that's all right. But you talk about God in public and everybody look at you yes. like you're crazy. Yes. You know what I'm talking about? That's because the wisdom of this world is not natural to pray. Uh -huh. And I want to tell everybody here, let the word of God shape your thinking yes. rather than this culture. Get into this book and understand the operations of God, because God works in mysterious ways. Can I go ahead and read? Chapter 4 says, if you want God to use you like you use the apostles, you have to be willing to become a fool for Christ. You have to stop worrying about how you look. You have to stop worrying about how you sound. You have to forget about making people like you. And some of us going to die because we're trying to get people like say about you. Listen, when you come to Christ and you get in Christ, the Bible says in chapter 4, you're a spectacle. Everybody looks at you. But you know what? Even when you ain't in Christ, you're a spectacle. People are always going to talk about you. I heard one of my God brothers once tell another girl, you better keep my name out of your mouth. I said to myself, whoa, that's a, that's a statement. How you going to tell somebody to keep something out of their mouth? That's Because of the basketball game. When I get in trouble, ain't no bad. 
actual church, so no, I said, why not? Can I go ahead and talk? Mm -hmm. I read in my Bible, 1 Corinthians, God takes the foolish things of the world to shame the worldly wise. God takes the weak things of the world to shame the strong and the powerful. I like the way the Good News Bible says this. It says, God chose what the world looks down on and despises and thinks is nothing in order to destroy what the world thinks is important. Listen, when you go to Washington and you see the White House, walk with your head high. You see President Trump say, hey, President. <laughs> you go to the mayor's mansion, I come in the mayor's mansion, I come in like this. Tell the mayor I'm here. They don't do nothing, but I say that. <laughs> if I would go see the governor, I look at the governor. When I just, when they had a meeting the, uh, a few years ago, and Clint came in, and all the people was falling over him. I said, hey, hey, hey there, President Clint. And then I asked him about some dirt that he did. Why you take Bill Hagee with all that money? You know why? And the people was looking at me. You know why? Because I serve somebody higher than all of you. I serve a God that made the universe. I serve a God that runs the world. I serve a God that manages the seas and the rivers and the oceans and the wind and the storm and the lightning. Who is the president of God? Oh, help me, Holy Help, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. So God has given you everything, hallelujah, to destroy what the world thinks is important. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, the world might not think you're important. But God gave you a Bible that shows you you're in the image of God. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Look at somebody else tell them, neighbor, God answers prayer. Because the Spirit of the Lord is here right now. And God is worthy to be praised. Tell the neighbor, we ought to praise God while we have a chance. And I'm not ashamed to tell you that I'm a fool for the Lord Jesus Christ. Let your neighbor go and put your hand together if you know what I'm talking about. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. You see, people didn't put you in the blessed place. It was God that put you in the blessed place. And people might look down on you, but give God the praise anyhow. You might not they might not understand your faith, but tell them I'm a fool for Christ. How many of y'all God ever touched your body one day? When you were so sick that your body was wrapped with pain. How many of y'all God ever made you pay the bill when you did not know where the money was coming from? How many of y'all God made your enemy leave you alone? Over and touch your neighbor. Tell them, neighbor, you might not understand my faith, but if you knew where God brought me from, you would shout along with me. Because, neighbor, he has brought me from a mighty long way through ups and downs, through trials and tribulations. 
Lord, people have acted a fool for a whole lot of mess. Some of us were fools for a man. Others of us were fools for a woman. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Some of us were at the dance club after the fool. Mm. Putting our bottom on the floor and our legs in the air. So how are we going to be ashamed to give you praise in your house? Some of us got drunk and drove cars. Some of us took things we didn't know what it was we was taking. Some of us would mess with people that would blow our brains out. But we got away anyhow. But we've been foolish. And we repent. But Lord, don't let us be the fool that says there is no God. Let us be the fool for Christ. Don't let us be the fool that tries to make themselves earthly rich, but on the scales of eternity they're poor and busted. Because they don't know Jesus Christ. Don't let us be the fool that does not know him as the forgiver of sins, the bringer of righteousness, the bringer of redemption and healing. Lord, help us to be able to sacrifice all forms of our image and self-regard so we can do your will. Help us, Lord, to be so, so loving you so much, so, so deep in you, that we don't mind looking crazy, looking foolish to the world. Because, Lord, we know on the scales of eternity, because of you, we'll always come out ahead. God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, we pray for some of the foolish people that we know. God, we got some fools in our family. We got some fools in our house. And Lord, sometimes we still can be foolish, so we better pray for foolish people. We ask you right now to have mercy. Have mercy. A young man who got a gun want to kill somebody because he says there is no God. Yes. Have mercy. The young person struggling for earthly riches don't have time to bow their knee. Don't have time to look up and call on Jesus. Have mercy, have mercy. on the church person who's more concerned about what they say about me in church than what they say about me before the throne of God. Yes. God help us to give up everything. So we can be real with you and be a fool for Christ. In Paul's foolishness, he wrote all of these letters. In his foolishness, he established the Gentile church. In his foolishness of 2,000 years ago, he's so great we're talking about it today. God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be that fool. It's not a shame to let people know who side I'm on. Help us to be that fool. It's not a shame to speak up and shine a light in the darkness. Help us to be that fool that says, can I pray for you? And then praise in the power of the Holy Ghost. God, help us to be a fool for Christ. Get the glory out of us. Help us to get out of the way. Now, Lord, if there's somebody here that doesn't believe, help them to believe right now. Somebody here want a church home, help them to know this church not only has open door, but open hearts. This is our prayer. And if that's you, you want to believe, you want to accept Christ as your Savior, come to the altar. If that's you, you want to come and join this church, come to the altar. Everyone else, put your hand together. Give God praise. 